If you imagine this is your car, then this is a motorcycle. It's easy to see other cars, but because a motorcycle is a third of the width of a car, it's very hard to see, but he's dead easy to hurt. And that's why, at junctions, I'm asking you to give a second thought for bikes. Stop, think once for cars, then think again for bikes. If you want to avoid this, think once, think twice, think bike. Save £200 on Harp Central Heating and get your first two services free. Nothing to pay till January. Ring 4646575 now. If you're thinking about buying a new car, even if you aren't an AtWest customer, do drop in and ask about a personal loan. Or give us a call. This is the martini time of day. Martini Rosso. Anytime, any place, anywhere. Because Martini is the right one. When you really appreciate your food, why not show it? Let's have a big hand for fish and chips. How about a round of applause for hamburgers? Now let's hear it for the good old banger. Not forgetting, of course, fish fingers. And last but not least, a really big hand for the great British breakfast. Hello. A Surrey couple are spending the night on wasteland under a tree near the council house that used to be their home. Brian and Christine Foster were evicted from the house in Bletchingley after four years of rent arrears totalling over a thousand pounds. The council say they've no obligation to house the Fosters whose two children have been taken into council care. The Fosters now say they've been punished enough. The day we got evicted the second time, you know, I asked if there's anywhere where we could go and they said no. They washed our hands of us. Three firemen and a lorry driver are in hospital after an acid spillage at Heston Services on the M4. The sulfuric acid is thought to have leaked from two large plastic containers. The victims were taken to West Middlesex Hospital, but they're not thought to be badly hurt. A woman sacked from her job at Golders Green Crematorium has lost her fight against unfair dismissal. Jane Turnock was sacked because she insisted on wearing trousers, even though her employers said they might upset mourners. Mrs. Turnock claimed unfair dismissal, but today the industrial tribunal ruled that she'd been fairly sacked because she disobeyed a lawful instruction from her boss. A couple from Ilford want warnings to be printed in holiday brochures about the danger of open lifts. Their son, Mark Peacock, was badly injured when he fell in a lift in Menorca and his arm was trapped between the wall of the lift shaft and the moving lift floor. Gardeners in the Thames area are being recruited in the hunt for a nasty species of stinging nettle. Urtica urens is smaller and lighter than the normal sort of nettle and its sting oh. is vicious. But one of the country's biggest manufacturers of homeopathic medicines is looking for large patches of them to use in making a cream for insect bites. Now the weather. Tonight dry and warm. Tomorrow dry and fairly sunny. Warm in the afternoon with a high of 25 degrees centigrade. That's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The northeasterly wind a little stronger than today. Well, that's it. Now it looks familiar with Dennis Norden. <laughs>
And if, if you've reached the age when the only flimsy things your wife ever gets from you are excuses, do you find certain aspects of modern life completely mystifying? Like, like for instance, why can't you hear so well on the telephone if you take your glasses off? <laughs> or, and, and an even greater mystery, how can a man with a paid-up mortgage, a car and a grown-up family still not know whether a toilet roll is supposed to be put in so it unwraps over the top or from <laughs> underneath? Well, there, there, there's just a couple of the reasons why this programme scurries back to the 1930s and the 1940s, those less complicated days when what we now leave as a tip could buy the whole dinner. Um, <laughs> when anything considered even slightly pornographic was always posted to you in a plain brown envelope. So everyone knew immediately what it was. <laughs> so let, let's meet the team who will be helping conduct our revision course, beginning with a well-known summer wine merchant, the seasoned actor, director and writer who's given us ten years of delight as a character called Compo, Mr. Bill Owen. And, and next to Bill, well, in a world that's becoming increasingly dominated by commas and semicolons, it's a rare pleasure to welcome a lady who's always been an exclamation mark. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Eartha Kitt. <laughs> and, and, at El and at Eartha's other side, someone else to set your pulses racing. Uh, a, a welcome return visit from the entertainer who's so devoted to nostalgia, he still twists wire coat hangers into little statues of Joan Crawford. <laughs> Who else but Mr. Larry Grayson? <laughs> On then to the, their first memory jog, a moment from an RKO film called New Faces of 1937, which was all about a Broadway producer deliberately putting on a flop so that he can pocket his backers' money. And though that may come as a blow to Mel Brooks fans, the film did mark the screen debut of a young dancer whose legs appeared to start just below the shoulder blades. dancing fix. Now, now, Bill, who, who was she? Mm, I don't make them like that anymore. Oh, that was Ann Miller. Ann Miller in her very first film. Now, did, do you like tap dancing? Yes. Ever, ever tried it? Ever done yes. it? Yes. Really? Oh, yes, I know how to do it and get on and get off. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, oh, I wish we could do it. Now, Eartha, Eartha, you, you actually began your career as a dancer. Yes, as a ballet dancer. With? Catherine Dunham. And how did that come about? Well, I took, somebody dared me to go down for an audition. I took the dare and won a full scholarship, and that's how I got in the company. Without being a dancer? Yes, that's how I got into show business, as a matter of fact. I'm still looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> but but where, did you, did, where, where did you go with the, with the Catherine Dunham troupe? Well, we toured across the United States to Mexico, and then we came here to London, and our first uh, theatre here was at the Prince of Wales. Ah. Now, did your early career, Larry, take you to glamorous places like Mexico? And no, I went to... Cleethorpes and Scunthorpe, <laughs> places like that. But, but your, your, your very earliest public appearance yes. as a singer, mm -hmm. where was that? Well, I used to do all the work events clubs in the Midlands and concerts and uh, cabarets. You what, know? what sort of songs did you sing? Well, I sing, in those days I was very young, of course, and... Uh, well, everybody <laughs> I used to wear a little white suit, a straw hat. I, I did a number, which was very risque in those days, by Clarks and Rose. Mm. And it used to go, uh, every, night when the sun, every, every night when the moon shines bright, in the bushes at the bottom of the garden. Yes, every night it's a lovely sight. 
in the bushes at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> By the light of the moon, how the couples, they all spoon. They don't say, I beg your pardon. And the old tomcat takes the tabby next door. In the bushes. In the bushes at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> that was very... <laughs> that was... Uh, yeah. Very naughty for a boy of 11. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds I, like a song I should learn, though. Yes, yeah. well, I'll give it the words after. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, you, you were also a child actor, weren't you? A what? Child actor. Oh, singer. Yes, I was. Yeah. Yes, well, yes. What, what, did you have anything to match in the bushes at the bottom of the garden at, at that age? Uh, well, I used to sing with dance bands, mainly. I yeah. sang with uh, Charlie Burton and his Harlem band. Harry Winfield and his All Stars. Oh, if you're going to dazzle us with names, let, let's let's um, <laughs> let, let's leave that, and we'll come back to those people later. Because that all arose out of a film called called the called New Faces of 1937. Of course, it was a very similar 1952 Broadway show that brought Eartha her first big success. Now, now, Eartha, that New Faces show in 1952. What's what's your most vivid memory of that show? Is it a nice memory? Oh, yes, there were absolutely wonderful memories because I didn't know what I was doing then and I don't know what I'm doing now. But, whatever it is. <laughs> well, well, what was, well, you, sang some, some, you sang more songs in the film than you did in the show, didn't, yes. didn't you? Well, what was your favourite song of, in, in that show? One of them was Bal Petit Bal, où j'étais connu, souviens-toi, où j'étais connu, t'es pour moi, na 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 rien que... Rien que, rien que, rien que, And the other one was Monotonous, where oh. I did it all and six chaise lounges. That's right, with a yeah. white... Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I had to cry and beg for those six chaise lounges because to get up and sing a song called Monotonous, just to stand there and walk across the stage and sing Monotonous is boring. Yeah. So I asked for these six chaise lounges and that's how I did the whole song. And it wasn't monotonous, mm -hmm. not boring. Yeah. Well, I'm fit. well that, <laughs> that, um, that, that, that 1952 New Faces was produced by a man called Leonard Silman and as he'd been putting on intermittent versions of it since the 30s, let's identify some other people that the show brought to the fore. Now, here, for example, is someone who made his first appearance in Silman's 1935 New Faces. Now, Bill, do you recognise that chap who came, began in New Faces? Yeah, that's Van Johnson. Van Johnson. Do, do you recognise the lady with him? She swam a lot. Uh, you could hear that. Williams. It's the Williams. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that, that song, I Should Care, was that one you did as a dance band singer? No. We'll do it now without being a dance uh, band. What, the one I used to do? No, I, I Should Care. Uh, I don't know. I, don't. I, I should, should care. care. I, I should, should go around, around dreaming, weeping, 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 weeping. I should care. <laughs> I should go without well, sleeping, sleeping. Right. sleeping. <laughs> whatever. whatever. You've only got to put her inside of a chaise long and, and, and she's off. I've got my fingers crossed, I've got my fingers crossed. <laughs> right. Eartha, Eartha, here's, here's, here's how a certain lady, we don't know very well in, in this country, this is how she looked in the very first New Faces show in 1934. Now, do you recognise her? And if you do, tell us a bit about her. She's got a very... Is Imogene Coker? It is Imogene Coker. Now, oh, my heavens. Now, she, tell us what you think of Imogene Coker. Oh, Cohen. I think she's been so misused because her talent is so fantastic. And when she was doing that show with uh, Phil, Sil Phil Silver, wasn't it? No, yes. Sid Caesar. Sid Caesar, thank yeah. you, yes. yes. Yeah. They both worked so beautifully together. I wish they were still on the television. We got them yes. over here, didn't we, Dennis? Yeah, mm. yeah. Retired. She's Absolutely. one of the funniest Absolutely ladies wonderful. that that's ever yeah. been. All right, now, here's somebody, Larry, for you, who appeared when they took new faces to Los Angeles. He was in one of the early new faces. Now, can you recognize yes, him? Yes, I can indeed. It's Tyrone Power. Tyrone Power. Yes. Now, you're a real film buff. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, who's the lady he's got his hand over her m the mouth of? Now, that's very difficult, isn't it? Yeah, and it's Jean hmm? Tierney. Well done, Jean Tierney. This is for people who don't remember how Jean Tierney you're, looked without yeah. her face being covered. Well lovely. done, Larry. Well, lovely. In, in, in the 1942 New Faces, a controversial new Hollywood personality of that year was burlesqued in a sketch they entitled Wells of Loneliness. And eight years after that, he appeared in a British picture where, as you'll see in this clip, his first appearance in the story became one of the all-time great movie moments. What kind of a spy do you think you are, Satchel Foot? What are you tailing me for? Cat got your tongue? Come on out. Come out, come out, whoever you are. 
Step out in the light and let's have a look at you. Who's your boss? You're some well, isn't that a good moment? Now, now, Larry, the name of the film? The Third Man. The Third Man. And who was that man in the doorway? Well, it's hard to believe today, but it was Orson Welles. Yeah, he's changed a bit. I mean, to, oh, to, yes. Well, it's the Mind you, that cat doesn't look too good today. <laughs> you, you know? I think I know the cat. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bill, what, what was, who, who was the other person in, in that little scene, the one who was walking? Uh, Joseph Cotton. Joseph Cotton. And do you remember the name of the instrument that you heard creep in? The... Uh, thank you. That was a zither. <laughs> zither, <yeah. laughs> It sounds like you've got some of your cat. I have. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, what was the name of the guy who played the zither in that film, made a small fortune? Do you remember? It was Anybody? a Greek name, wasn't it? It was an Austrian. Actually. Was it? Yeah. Do you remember? Oh. Anton, Anton Ant Karras. Ant yeah. Karras. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, getting back to Orson Welles, he, he played quite a part in in your early career, Arthur. Tell us about, or do you want to tell us about <laughs> yes, he, something he about... Yes, he introduced me uh, from, I was, I was a dancer, then I was a singer, mm. and he saw me in carols, and he introduced me opposite him as Helen of Troy as an actress, yes. which I won the second best acting award of France of 1951. Mm. But in the third, the third man theme was, drove him absolutely up the wall. Really? And while we were on tour with that show, he used to go into the cabaret, and every time Orson Welles entered, they, he, they would play this tune. So he yeah. used to go over to every phonograph player, take it off, and go... <laughs> and go, his knees, and then he would go into the restaurant. <laughs> There's a big comedy moment coming up now with the clip that will now take us across the break, because thanks to a newly restored Technicolor print, we're bringing you the star of one of London's most popular wartime shows in a sketch that hasn't been on view for, lo, these umpteen years. Would you come? Yes. Will you bring me up that screen, please? Or this one at the back? There's only one there. Well, I'm not to know. All right, you don't need to get like that. I wouldn't ask you to do it if I could get someone else to do it. Now, where's he gone to? Will you go? I'll see the mayor for trees. <laughs> Here I am. I don't want it like that. It's no good taking a mare in a forest. The forest? Oh, well, you should have an assistant for this. I haven't got one. There. The man's so utterly stupid, I could scream. <laughs> oh! <laughs> now, Whittaker. Yes? Will you move about, and I'll see if I can spot you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Marvellous! Absolutely wonderful! Yes? Oh, it is! Come and look! You can trust the dealers in Car Buyer. Car Buyer, in your newsagents now, only 20p. Looks great, Jean. Some coffee? Yes, please, over there. Jean, you switched brands. That's not Nescafe. Well, I saved some money, but... But now you know that no other coffee has the richer, smoother Nescafe taste. Except Nescafe. Right. We'll use mine. Mmm, this cafe. Worth a little extra? Definitely. She's got the message. Nescafe. Coffee at its best. When Jim came home from a hard day's craft, all he wanted was a nice repast. What, no meat? What, no meat? What about a bit of British lamb? Could have had a lamb chop. Chop, 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 chop. He could have had a casserole, casserole, casserole. He could have had a moussaka. Who had no meat? He could have had a curry. He could have had some meatballs. Look. He could have had a hot, hot, hot roast, hot roast. He could have had a shepherd's pie, how about a pan? He could have had it barbecue. What about a bit of British lamb? Chissington Zoo. There's always so much to do. Watch out for the Dirt Diggers race day, August the 13th, at Chissington, near Kingston, Surrey. Mm-hmm. We must have a nice dignified position. Oh, yes, please. Something on the lines of, um... 
Yes. Yes. Oh, good. We'll, uh, we'll have these books with you. Oh, jolly good. Have the books there. Give the impression that you can read. <laughs> Put, uh, put your elbow on the books for me, will you? Yes, like that. Put your hand towards your head. Oh, I see. You haven't dozed off, have you? No, I'm wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> now then, uh, just lift your head slightly. And I think a little smile. <laughs> Show me the teeth. Don't take them out, it's all right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Whittaker, you'll keep very still for me, won't you? Mm -hmm. Because it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Whittaker, don't look at the camera. No, all right. Whittaker. <laughs> You're looking at the camera. Honestly, I'm not. Really, I'm not. <laughs> now, still now. Very still. Still. <laughs> Larry, you, you enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, who was he? Uh, who was yeah, it? Sid yeah. Field. Sid Field. Yes. And, and, and Whitaker. Who was Whitaker? Jerry Desmond. Jerry Desmond, yes. indeed. Now, any, any idea of, of which show that sketch came from? It came from, uh, there was two, Strike and you know it, but the second one, that came from the second one. Second one, Strike, strike It Again. Strike yes. It Again. Yes. Now, Bill, if you look at this program of Strike It Again, it's quite an interesting thing on a, a footnote, as it were, on another sketch that he did. Now, look at that line. The shirts used in this scene are washable. Now, tell, <laughs> yeah, tell the younger viewers why it was necessary to put that note in at that time. Well, we had uh, clothes rashing on, on at that time, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. And they yeah. didn't want to think we were using a new, a new <laughs> shirt every, exactly. every show. Even now, if you could afford one. That's right. <laughs> now, now at, at that time, Bill, you, you were appearing in, uh, also in a, at a very special sort of cabaret theatre that London has. Do you know the one I mean? Uh, oh, you mean the Players' Theatre? The Players' Theatre, yeah. yeah. Now, here, here was, here's somebody else who was appearing at the Players' Theatre at the same time as you. Now, I wonder if you can identify that lady. Yes, that's Peter Ustinov. Peter Ustinov it is indeed, yeah. yes, when he used to play in cabaret. And what, tell us one of the songs you used to sing in. Um, well, one of my favourites was it re uh, If It Wasn't For The Houses In Between. Which went? Um, it really was very pretty. Oh, it really was a very pretty garden. And Chinkford to the eastward could be seen. With a ladder and some glasses, you can see the Wackney marshes. It, it wasn't for the asses in between. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, <laughs> we'll do it again for you with subtitles after in a minute. But, but for this week's vintage film trailer, we've, we've chosen one for a film that dates back to 1932, partly because its title, Call Her Savage, is the kind of phrase Earthers are, often had to put up with, but also because its star, Miss Clara Bow, reminds us of a time <coughs> when cinemas were bringing us IT instead of E.T. So that's what it was. To get me to make a show of myself. Dad brought them here deliberately, just for that purpose. And you knew it. Well, I knew they were coming. I didn't know who they were. And to be perfectly frank, Nasser, I don't know that I regret what happened. You savage! Is that in there? Yes, miss. Bill, that yes. lady, yeah. Look, it looked like a Janet Rieger commercial, that's yes. like that. Well, now, was, was she one, one of the ladies that, that, that you used to entertain thoughts about? No, nah, she never life? touched me. No? No. <laughs> well, who, which, which lady of that, that, that time used to disturb you? I was totally in love with Sylvia Sidney. Ah, <laughs> totally, totally in love, love with her. Day and night. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Larry, actually, Clara Bow never really made it, as, a, as a, in, in the talk is. Why do you, what, what, what do you think happened? I don't know why, she, it just didn't happen for her. Yeah. Now, you, your, your favourite sort of Hollywood ladies were, were much more glamorous. Not glamorous, oh yes, I was for uh, Lana Turner and Hedy Lamarr. That, that, that was the, my glamour, yeah. yes. Well, yes. <coughs> uh, uh, Arthur, she used to be known, Clara Bell used to be known as the it girl when it was as, as near as we could get to the word sex. And those kind of labels 
have always been applied to you. Now, have you resented that, or, or has it been sort of fun? No, not at all. <laughs> you know, you're the only person we... Love we've... every moment of it. <laughs> we, we never yet had anybody who's got all, all her body up on the sofa like that. I mean, <laughs> it's rather nice. <clears throat> Let's think of it next time Tessie O'Shea comes. <laughs> comes on but you you've always you, you've always kind of sent up the sexy image haven't, haven't you? Now, did you was that a deliberate ploy or is it something you can't help doing uh, well I, I think i send myself up because i have never known what i'm doing and i don't think i will ever know what i'm doing i don't want to know what i'm doing i may find <laughs> well, out what my right. secret yeah. is it works. <laughs> yeah. whatever you do it works Thanks, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, well i'm now to to a, a, a bit of music that takes us back to the days when the only bg in the charts was benny goodman because in 1943, the girl singer he had with the band was still so unknown that when they appeared that year in a film called Stage Door Canteen, her name wasn't even on the cast list. If you had prepared 20 years ago, you wouldn't be a wonder now from door to door. Why don't you do that? nodding and beaming there, Bill. Well, yeah. did, did, did you recognise her? Yes, that's Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee. Now, you told us you used to sing with some, mm. some name bands. Um, uh, yeah, big name bands. Well, I'm, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big names, but not very well. You've never heard of Charlie Burton before. <laughs> no. Well, tell us, tell, us, tell us the kind of song you used to sing with them. Um, I've got to get my old tuxedo pressed. <laughs> I've got to sew a button on my vest for the night of a god to look my best <laughs> Don't look back in town. oh great yeah <laughs> yeah I can't understand why Charlie Burton never made it with Charlie is probably watching this yeah well yes. Charlie you know <laughs> Yeah. I hope he's watching it. <laughs> you know who to blame. Now, Larry, one of your early songs. Oh, I used to sing things like Shepherd of the Hills. <laughs> I hear you calling. No, poor old Shepherd. <laughs> Eartha, Eartha. I, 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 I have I... to learn your repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> What, what I'd love to hear from your rep repertoire is something that I don't think people have heard over here a lot. That's a, a song you sang in a, a musical called Shinbone Alley, where you played a rather dilapidated cat. Now, do you well, know this? so dilapidated. <laughs> well, a disreputable cat. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, you might, do you know the one I mean? Just, just a little bit of it. Oh, you mean Shinbon Alley? Yeah, yeah. Do I remember it? Let's see. Francis. My youth I shall never forget And there's nothing I really regret The years I have thrown down the drain Will sparkle like golden champagne it's cheerio my dirio france and pirouette it's cheerio my dirio there's a life in me yet on that, on that in inspiring note, this, this is where we have to adjourn the meeting. We hope something in the half hour brought on the same exalted emotions as that moment at the end of the 1930 movie Morocco, when Marlena Dietrich set out to cross the trackless Sahara wearing an evening gown and high-heeled sandals. But if all we've actually left you feeling is that you're gradually turning from a bold young warrior into a bald old warrior, well... 
There is, <coughs> there is one bit of advice worth remembering. If you're ever asked to say what your age is, never lie about it. Be as vague as all hell, but, <laughs> but don't lie about it. See you. <laughs> Next.